Ain't nothing better than watching you smile Whoa, 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 whoa. Ain't nothing better than watching you laugh Out loud, my baby Ain't nothing better than watching you Be you Ain't nothing better than right now In your eyes lie the secrets I don't wanna miss Put your hand in my Hi, this is Trey Passer, and welcome to my Man of Steel uh, spoiler discussion uh, video. I um, decided to do this, so sorry everybody else doing it, I decided to do one. And I also have a special guest star, as promised, um, uh, Clark Kent, who, who helped me with my previous trailer and reviews and stuff, uh, on the Man of Steel, and so he's here. Um, so say hello to people, Clark. Thank you, Trey Passer, for having me. I really appreciate you including me as part of this. The Man of Steel discussion. I really appreciate it. And so thank you for having me here. Thank you for being here. And uh, the uh, thing is, I saw Man of Steel Friday and uh, with you, and you said that you had a guest that it came with us. I didn't see. Um, but uh, uh, first, I just want to say um, I, I saw Man of Steel again today. Uh, so. I want to change my initial uh, review of it. I gave it an 8 out of 10 because I saw that I my expectations were off the charts for it, of course, and I expected it almost to be perfect, which isn't fair, really. And uh, But after seeing it again today, I really, really, really enjoyed it even more. Uh, so I'm going to change my rating. I gave it an 8 out of 10. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go there <laughs> and give it a 9 out of 10 because I really, really, this, it really made me, after seeing it again, you know, with a new crowd of people, and it was still crowded when I saw it on Sunday, and I saw it on regular 2D, not any 3D, and no IMAX, regular theater, and it was just as, it seemed to be good, just as good as I remembered it on Friday, and really changed my opinion of it, because like I said, I think my expectations are a little bit too too high, but, yeah, it's, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10, because I th think it really, really hit, it hit, hit, hit all the, the spots that I really wanted, it really did hit it, hit those spots. Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what I liked about it, and then Clark will talk about what he liked about it. Okay, and then I'll say what I didn't like, or and then he'll go and say what he didn't like. I think that should be fair. So this video, I don't want this video to drag on too much, too long. Okay, so does that sounds fair to you, Clark? Yeah, that sounds fair. Okay, that sounds good. You start off, Trey Bassett. Okay, before I start my discussion, just to show you, um, I did see there's the IMAX ticket right there. I saw Friday, and then here's today. I saw the regular 2D. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I changed my opinion of it. I think I, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Okay, just really, I really, really enjoyed it the, the second time. I think my, my expectations, instead of being so sky high, I just went in. Saw it, you know, and enjoyed it for what it is, and it's a really, really, really good movie. Totally worth worth seeing multiple times. I think <laughs> just a really good movie, and glad you know, it's going to be a success. And hopefully they can make a Justice League movie. You know, more Man of Steel sequels, of course, and a Justice League movie. Anyway, what I liked about the movie, I'll I'll do that first. What I liked about it, I like them being on Kry on Krypton and showing, you know, you know, Kal El's birth, and in you know Jor-El, you know Jor -El speaking to the council, which is all has been in previous Superman movies, but you see more more action on on um, Krypton with Jor-El basically fighting for that that Kodak, which powers uh, the ship that takes Kal to Earth, and of course him fighting battling Zod on Earth on on Krypton and ultimately being killed by by uh, uh, General Zod and General Zod getting and his minions being sent to the Phantom Zone, and the Krypton exploding, of course. And then you know they show Clark as a as a as an adult, and then they do effectively, very effectively, I think, use flashbacks to show his how tough he had fitting in growing up, which I think was really good and well done. And also another thing that I liked about this, they they start they started off with Lois Lane, you know, she's an investigative reporter in this, and she's basically tracking down all this mysterious figure that's been uh, helping people, this, this mysterious guardian angel, of course, which is Clark, okay, and 
and she basically discovers him as he's discovering his heritage. She's discovering who he is, basically. And and I like the fact that they made there's no pretense about this. She basically, when he's basically finding finding the ship, the Kryptonian ship that crashed, she's you know tracking him actually, you know, and then she uh, winds up getting hurt, and he winds up rescuing her, and of course. He uses his um, heat vision to, to seal her wounds, and of course, so she knows who he, you know, she's seen him and stuff, and she you knows that he's this mysterious man that she's been looking for, of course, and then the ship takes off, and then you see him learn about, you know, by putting in that symbol that came with him on the rock ship. Uh, he, he finds out from jor who he is and his heritage and stuff, and then you see him, that you see in the trailer, him donning the, the, the suit, you know, and jor explains to him how the S means hope. That's the L symbol. That's what it means, and how he can be a force for good, and how uh, General Zod, you know, tried to take over and stuff. And I like that part. I love those parts about that. And what I also really liked was um, they the, the, when the, the, also with the flashbacks they showed Kevin Costner. I thought Kevin Costner and speaking of, and Jor-El and or Russell Crowe was really really good as just you know as the two uh, parental father figures and. Clark Kent, Kal El, Superman's life, and I love the effective use of those flashbacks because you see um, Kevin Costner, you know, trying to, to tell him how he has to hold back and maybe the world's not ready for him and stuff, and 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 I really liked uh, that scene where they show where there's the tornado when they're on the highway and the Clark, Clark is arguing with him that he doesn't want to be on the farm and basically telling him that you're not really my dad, you know, he says that out of anger more than anything else. And you see him, you know, where he makes everybody go to the underpass, and Jonathan Kent goes back to save the dog, and then he gets trapped. And then that great moment where Clark can save him, but his father tells him, "No, don't do it in front of anybody like that. The world's not ready." And basically, he has to watch his father die, which absolutely, you know, kills him. And and I like the way they did that. There's so so many good emotional moments in this movie. It just really, really gets to you. And then, of course, you get General Zod coming down to the planet. And basically saying that he wants uh, Kyle among them, and they need him to turn himself in, and or watch this world suffer. <laughs> and of course, he's doubting it. You know, of course, he, he actually goes to a church. It's a really good moment. He goes to a church and talks to a priest, and says he basically tells him he's the one they're looking for, and and he doesn't really. And the priest tells him, "What do you do? Uh, what do your gut tells you?" And he says, "You don't have to trust God." And he said, "But I don't." I don't Think I could trust mankind either, and then he said, "Sometimes you got to take a leap of faith, take you know, and then the trust will come later." I thought that was a really another good, important part in the movie. And then he goes and turns himself in, of course. And then you have the, you know, he goes onto the ship, and Zod, and then Lois Lane goes with him, of course, because they request her. And it's just, I think I'm getting into too many details, but. I, I like that part, you know, from that part on, you know, you, for those who've seen the movie, they know what I'm talking about. You see him on the ship, and basically they're telling him that they're going to start a new Krypton on Earth. And then you have these great fight scenes in between, in small and Smallville, which are actually great between Fiora, I've got the tall guys, and Superman. Just really good punching, rock 'em, sock 'em action. Just, it's good to see Superman actually throw punches and destruct, the absolute destruction. <laughs> Is absolutely breathtaking to watch. I really, really enjoy that destruction. I know that I'm gonna say this like that way, but I really like that destruction. It's just destroying stuff left and right, which is really, really good. And and then you have the uh, yeah, you know, Zod tries to um, basically he's gonna convert Earth. You know, he finds out about that the uh, that codex that he was looking for. They came for the plant look, looking for that actually it's in Kal-El's body. That's what jor put it in his body. So. And he asked the scientists, "Do we need him to be alive for that to harvest it?" But those, you know, those, those, uh, the, the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the cells, his body. He says, "No, that's necessary." So of course, you know, Clark, you know, they, he he starts to basically trans, uh, terraforming. I think that's what they call it, the planet to to convert it to more like Krypton because they're basically going to take over Earth and repopulate it with Kryptonian technology. And of course, Superman has to stop them, of course, and then. You know, uh, Jor-El earlier told Lois how to do it, how to, you know, they're going to use the ship that Clark came in to destroy the other ship. And 
I just really, really, really liked that. that just, you know, the destruction was epic. And even in Smallville, like I said, you know, Superman winds up destroying the, you know, the one ship, and then they wind up destroying the other ship. And then, of course, Jor-El is, not Jor-El, uh, General Zod is irate. And he goes absolutely nuts. And then him and Superman have a drag-out, knockdown fight, which is absolutely great. And that last moment where where he has General Zod in, like, basically in a headlock, and General Zod is about to fry a family, and of course, and he won't stop. He's telling him to stop. He's pleading with him to stop, but he, he says never. And then he basically snaps his neck. That was chilling to watch. Uh, that was absolutely chilling to watch. Just because Superman had to kill him. Of course, he screams, and of course, Lois is there, and she comforts him. And, and of course, Lois Lane and Clark and Superman they actually kiss in this movie. <laughs> which is really good. I like that. And I like, like I said, I love the fact that she knows that he's Superman right off the bat. <laughs> and so there's no pretense about it. And then, of course, at the end where he, he comes, you know, he basically tells his mother he has to, he wants to be close to the ground so he can be, you know, where where he can help people and stuff and it won't look suspicious. So, of course, he goes to the Daily Planet. You see him walking and putting on the, the bike. He bikes to the Daily Planet, puts on the suit and then puts on the glasses and he gets introduced to everybody by Perry White and then he just uh, puts on that glass and, and Lois Lane smiles at him and says welcome to the planet which can have a double meaning welcome to the daily planet and welcome to the planet which is also great and I love that okay so I think I'm monopolizing the time my uh, the talk so uh, you go ahead Clark and tell me what you liked about the movie okay thank you Trey Pastor okay I'll tell you what I liked uh, about the movie. Uh, first of all, I love the uh, the whole theme of the movie, uh, and I love the um, the whole you know on Krypton, you know, showing the events and showing Jor-el. Actually, Jor-el and this was a man, a man of action actually, and they show him actually with a plan and actually you know I like the way he kind of bitch slapped uh, <laughs> uh, General Zod on Krypton and stuff and. You know how he convinced his wife, you know, you know, Lara, who didn't really want to send Cal off, but you know, he told, you know, he ultimately convinced her, and she launched him. And of course, he wound up dying and stuff, which was really sad. But I think Russell Crowe was excellent anyway. But anyway, uh, then of course he's in the plant. He's on, you know, the ship comes to Earth, and um, I like when they showed, you know, him in flashbacks, basically how hard his childhood was, which is, you know, when you think about it, you know, he's. You know, all his powers and stuff, and that great sequence that they show that they tease you in the trailer of, of him in the, when he runs to the room, but they actually show you him in the classroom getting overwhelmed by all the senses and stuff, by super hearing and stuff, and, and vision, x ray vision and stuff, and just running to the closet and saying that the world's too big, mom, and how Martha Kent kind of talks him down. And it just really, really t struck an emotional chord with me at that, all that moments, and also the, the flashback moments with Jonathan Kent played by Kevin Costner. Who uh, was basically telling him to try to hide his uh, pop, that he had to hide his self because he didn't think the world was ready for that, okay? And he wanted to protect his son, and which led to that, that moment, one of my, one of the great emotional moments to me in the movie, where uh, there's a tornado, and um, after, you know, a bit of an argument before that, he's, uh, well, Clark is saying that he don't want to be a farmer, and kind of yells at his father that he doesn't, you know, he's not really, it's probably some people that found him in a field, and you know, they're trying to get everybody to safety during a hurricane, or tornado, excuse me, I think. And and then, of course, his father goes to save the dog, and his father's getting ready to swept up, and his father, you know, Clark can save him, of course, but he tells Clark, no, stay back. You know, I don't want you to expose yourself, which is, you know, ultimately sacrificing himself so Clark wouldn't be exposed, which is the ultimate act of love, really, and you think about it, and Clark just... Just, just destroyed him. He saw the look on his face when he just screamed, Dad, you know, and just, oh, that got to me. Uh, that was real emotional. And of course, I like also that they uh, didn't uh, beat around the bush with the lowest thing you're finding out that Clark Kent is Superman. They, she went straight into it. She was the investigative reporter. She went for the story of looking for this mystery man, which led her to the Antarctic and to the ship. And actually, Clark saved her on the ship, which I really liked. And of course, he basically uses heat vision to heal her wound. Okay, and then, so basically she knew who he, she was, and he was, and she, you know, she, they wouldn't publish the story, of course, Perry, wouldn't, but she leaked it out to her on these rag uh, online uh, shows, 
and of course it came out. And, but she protected his identity, of course. But and then of course, you know, Zod comes down to the plant. You know, excuse me, Cal finds out who he really is by speaking to Jarrell. You know, because the ship takes off, and he tells, you know, once he inserts that the um, the icon for the symbol for Al into the ship, to the ship that's been down there for thousands of years, he finds out from Jarrell who he who he is and the whole history of Krypton and everything else and about General Zod. And of course, he puts on the suit for the first time, and he flies. One of my favorite scenes is he flies, and, and he learns how to gradually how to fly, and he just takes off. The sonic booms all over the place, which I really, really like. And of course, and then it comes a moment where Zod, and him, because of that beacon that he, you know, activating that beacon in the ship, when he learns about himself, that leads to uh, the uh, General Zod and his minions to Earth, where they send that message. You see in the, that one in the fourth trailer, I believe. Where he tells him that that you know Kyle Allah is on the planet and turn him over or we'll uh, watch your planet suffer or whatever consequences were, and of course Superman turns himself in. Of course he has that moment of doubt when he goes to the preach to the uh, minister and the minister tells him, that, you know sometimes you gotta go have a leap of faith, and which is a really a good strong emotional moment. Of course Superman turns himself in, and you see that scene you see in the trailer where Lois Lane is interviewing him, and he turns himself in and then. The other parts I like, like I said, were the fights. The, the fights in Smallville. You know, there's a part, great, I forgot, the great part where uh, where General Zod's ship comes down and basically he threatens Martha uh, Kent, asking where the ship is. And then, of course, Cal, you know, Superman takes off, and that's the scene you see, I think, in, this, in the spot they showed before the movie came out where he's just beating the crap out of uh, General Zod, and they crash through a power plant and through the gas station. And then you see the absolutely brutal fights they have in between, uh, what's her name, uh, that, uh, what's it, Fiora, okay, and that tall guy, I forgot what his name is, in Superman, where they just absolutely destroy Smallville, the smashing, crashing, and everything else, which I absolutely love, the absolutely brutal fights in Smallville, which I absolutely love, I love the physical, physicalness of it, and showing Superman throwing punches and getting punched and crashing into stuff and, which is fantastic. That just, and then of course you have the, uh, you know, the plan where Superman comes up with to, um, you know, he has to, you know, because General Zod are playing to, uh, he finds out that the Codex is actually in uh, Superman. Jura put it in there, so he's gonna convert. He's gonna transfer, terraform the Earth, and basically that's where you see all the destruction. He's trying to convert the Earth to more like Krypton, and he's gonna harvest the the, terra, the Codex from Superman's body, and uh, Start a new Krypton on Earth, and of course Superman has to stop him. Of course, and and Lois knows of a plan. Of course, the Jor-El told her how to stop him. And then you have the fight at the end, and Superman after ultimately stops him. And then you have that great fight at the end between Superman and and General Zod, which is absolutely this another knockdown, smash down, lovely, I love great physical fight. And then you have that great scene towards the end where Superman has him in a headlock in a train station, and General Zod. You know, knowing that Superman has this affection for humans, and said he's never going to stop, and he's going to, and he's about to heat vision this this family, and Superman ultimately has to snap his neck, and that moment was just chilling to watch, and uh, oof, that was brutal. Of course, that destroyed Superman because he didn't want to have to kill him, but Zod Zod said never. He asked him to stop, and he said never, and so Superman ultimately had to kill him to stop him, and of course he screams, and then Lois is there to comfort him, and uh, and then you have the great scene where Superman, uh, that general, oh, uh, you see him knock down the satellite and tells him, listen, I'm here to help, but I want you to have, you know, he said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a raising a Kansas for 33 years. I'm not, you know, I'm a, I'm a farmer's boy, okay? He said, so don't inspire me. You know, basically, tell him, basically, don't inspire me. I'm going to, I'm here to help. And then he have a conversation with his mom where he tells her that he's going to, you know, get a job and stuff, and it has to be somewhere where he's on to the ground, close to the ground, and he can take off. And it won't be noticeable, and of course you get that scene, great scene where he gets introduced at the Daily Planet, and Lois Lane has a big smile on her face and tells him welcome to the planet, and that's what I love. And for me, the movie gets a uh, a nine out of ten as well. I just really, really, really liked it. So, uh, uh, go ahead, Trey Pastor. That's that's my review of it, I guess. Okay, good points, Clark. I I'm totally agreeing with you, uh, but. I also want to say special to the performances. I think, like I said, Henry Cavill as as Clark Kent and um, and uh, 
Superman was absolutely fantastic. It's perfect casting. He's totally believable as Clark Kent and Superman. He's just like, I think, the, like I said, the best Superman since Christopher Reeve. Just really, really, really good. And Russell Crowe and Kevin Costner were absolutely fantastic as the parental figures. Uh, just great. And Amy Adams, spot on as Lois Lane. Investigative reporter, he really believed her. She was feisty when she had to be and tough. And she really helped Superman a lot in this movie. And I really liked her portrayal. Okay, and uh, like I said, General Zot, oh yeah, and Fiora. The, the, the actress that played Fiora was totally, especially while she was smoking hot. <laughs> and then she was absolutely fearless. And those fights with Superman were absolutely great. And Michael Shannon's a great actor. He was, he was good too <laughs> for what they gave him to do. He was really, really good, Michael Shannon. Okay, uh, really good, and and I think there's there's one moment that I really liked it uh, towards the end of the movie, where he basically tells um, Superman, every action that I take, no matter how cruel or unkind or something like that, basically is the gist of it, is for the betterment of my people. Okay, and, and he really believes that, and that's because that's the way he was raised. He was born to be a military, you know, from the way Krypton, Kryptonians were raised. That's what he was meant to do. So that's why he feels the way he does. Okay, so who do you think was good in the movie? I agree with most of your choices. I thought Henry Cavill was pitch perfect as Superman, Clark Kent, uh, Kevin Costner, and and, and uh, Russell Crowe, great as the parental figures, uh, the, 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 all the figures, I guess. And Diane Lane, too, she was good, too. She didn't have much to do, but she was good. And... Uh, like I said, I really like that part where she went to the classroom to, to calm him down and stuff. And, you know, tell him to pretend it's an island and stuff and that. I really like that part. And, um, excuse me, um, Amy Adams was good, I think, as Lois Lane. They had chemistry, her and Henry Cavell as, as Clark Kent and Lois Lane. And, um, of course, the, the actress who played Fiora, like, I agree with you, she's smoking hot. And, and she could act and she, boy, she kick ass. <laughs> and she was great. And I like Michael Shannon, too, as Zod, exactly. He... Had him, he was a man with a plan. He was just being evil to be evil. He, he had a, that's just the way he was raised to do things. And he was all for his society, even though it was wrong, you know, to, to kill, wipe out mankind. But he really believed it. He, he wasn't just doing it for power. He did it because he truly believed in it. So I think Michael Shannon was good. He is a good actor anyway. And uh, who else was in there? Uh, I think that's about it. Henry Cavell, Amy Adams, uh, Kevin Costner, and Russ Crowe, Diane Lane, yep. Michael Shannon and the actors play Fiora. I think they're all spot on. Uh, really, really good. So uh, that's what I think of the performance. Spot on and great casting too as well. Okay, I agree with those. Great performances by those people. Um, and what other thing, uh, since I want to drag this video on too long, you said you had a guest. Okay, so um, why don't you just introduce your guest and uh, let me know what he thinks about the movie, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, my guest, um, I managed to get a ticket for him at the last minute. He was a big fan, and uh, he wanted to see another man with a cape, <laughs> so he wanted to see this movie. So um, uh, without further ado, uh, here's my guest. I hope you enjoy it. I think you'll like it, Trey Bassett. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jay Bazzer. Right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to do that to you. I'm sorry. I just couldn't resist. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I just I couldn't resist that. Okay, me and Vader came up with that little thing just to you know just to you know not, nothing personal. We just had to throw that in there because I knew you, we thought you'd get a giggle out of that. Okay, nothing personal. Okay, very funny. Okay. I'll take that Sith Lord and raise you another Sith Lord. <laughs> Sorry, Trey Passer, huh? We didn't mean it. It was just a joke. Just a joke. We thought you, the invader thought you'd appreciate it. You know, lighten up the mood, you know, a little humor. We didn't mean anything, okay? So you can back off you and Darth Maul there, okay? <laughs> so 
sorry, Trey Passer. Uh, seems uh, I'm needed. I have to go. You will give the people of Earth an ideal to strive towards. They will race behind you. They will stumble. They will fall. But in time, they will join you in the sun. In time, you will help them accomplish wonders.